We are not done talking about Star Wars, right, chat room? We are not done. Thing is, Collider, of all places, is one of the news publications and the new news outlets that should be uh, going under relatively soon, in my, in my opinion. In my opinion, right? So, <laughs> code plus Asian equals any? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Damn! Damn, why is it inside out? All right, all right, we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue here, all right. This is from Collider, okay? And I shit you not, this is the actual article title. Star Wars' biggest problem is the fans. There it is. There it is. So, if you are not blaming the fans, the 85% the 75 to 85 percent of the Star Wars fandom is 100 percent out of the 85. They're male. They're male dominated. This, this, like Chris Gore said, you're taking a boy brand and turning it into a girl brand, and they're saying Star Wars is for everyone. And if you're making a show or a t or something. For everyone, you're making it for no one, right? Star Wars' biggest problem is the fans. So basically, they're blaming me. They're blaming you. Yeah. Did you coom already? We're just going to get started. We're getting started. Here we go. <laughs> if you look right over here, Star Wars projects have been facing relentless online hate and criticism impacting performers and creators. Modern Star Wars projects have expanded the universe with div diverse representation, but also weather a backlash in the process. The future of Star Wars should be focused on representation, inclusivity, overcoming toxic elements in the fandom. Wow. Wow, here we go. The internet has never made it easy for people to speak their minds. A convenience of digital connection aside, there have always been online trolls and toxic comments ready to pound, uh, pounce on anyone who dares to bear their authentic self in public life. The newest round of controversies are unfounded criticisms directed at Star Wars. So I'm pretty sure they're talking about Jeremy Johns, right? You're talking about Nerd Rotic, Disparu, As, uh, Geeks and Gamers, anyone from the the, the 199, the Welcome to the Rebe uh, Re Welcome to the Rebellion, to the Fellowship, and even Star Wars Theory, right? Here it is. Uh, projects demonstrates that the Star Wars performers and uh, wait, 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 the project that the, the, the beloved sci-fi franchise is no different. For decades, viewers have been relentlessly attacking Star Wars performers and creators with renewed push against TV shows like The Acolyte, demonstrating the venom <laughs> with which a particular set of audience members scrutinize everyone's favorite galaxy. The vitriol of these persistent voices have subsequently spread throughout the internet, making it feel impossible to say anything positive about Star Wars without turning every discussion into a heated debate. Now, the first two seasons of Mandalorian were good. The third season sucked. Third season was actually okay, actually. Uh, third season was pretty good. Fourth season sucked, okay? Andor was pretty good. Nobody, really, nobody watched it, right? Uh, Book of Boba Fett heard is garbage. And Obi-Wan, I heard it was garbage as well. So, with that said, not if you make good stuff, people will come, right? Case in point, I was me and Gray on Project Agro, we were talking mad crap, mad crap and shit about the live action One Piece. And then lo and behold, it proved us wrong. It was freaking amazing. We loved it. We gave it like a 9 out of 10. It's so good, right? It felt rushed, but it was, re it was really, really good. Just make good stuff. Now, here's another one. Uh, Emma Darcy, she she plays Rhaenyra. And in the most recent article, she says that she doesn't even feel like she's a woman. She feels bad. She feels like she's a bad woman. So she comes out as non-binary, right? But she doesn't let her political ideology seep into the show. Because the show is what matters. The writing is good. I don't care what woke stuff you have, right? As long as your writing is good, people will come. And that's the reason why House of the Dragon is doing fun way, way, way better. It's doing phenomenal. Way better than the Acolyte. 
The accolade is garbage, and it's really bad. Unacceptable abuse that Star Wars prequel era actors like Ahmed Best received from fans in the late 90s and early 2000s have been well documented. And since then, negative Star Wars voices, sorry, Star Wars voices have only been amplified by the mainstream spread of social media. Leslie Hetland's groundbreaking series have been relentlessly review bombed online, causing the acolyte to possess a huge disparity between its positive critical reception and abysmal audience score on aggregate websites like Rotten Tomato. Now, here's the thing. Like I said before, the critics, what are they there for? They are there to set up a message saying that, hey, this movie is good. Hey, this TV show is good. You should go watch it. The audience believes in that. Go watch a said show or movie. Comes back and said, you lied to me. This thing is awful. And that's what's been happening, right? And that's why if you go to the Rotten Tomatoes of the Acolyte, I believe last time we checked, let's check it now. Let's do it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Uh, let's see. The Acolyte. Doing it live. There we go. Where are we right now? We are sitting at 8414. It is not good. Okay? This is not good. All right? The writing sucks. You, 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 you know, you basically let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Basically, exactly what Kylo Ren said. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to rewrite history. Kiadi Mundi's thing is like, Oh, we haven't seen a Sith in a millennia. Like that actually bears weight and now you just shit all over it wikipedia i'm talking to you and right over here house of the dragon let's go over here boom there it is 80 90 and 86 make good shit and the fans will come i'm gonna come it's that simple right it's that simple let's continue all right, let's see uh, right over here. Since the majority of these hate-filled criticisms are either overreactions to alleged continuity errors within the Star Wars universe or backlash aimed at attacking the show's long overdue inclusivity, the bad actors spreading them are clearly spinning controversy out of nothing. And its manufactured outrage can be directly traced back to demographics of the original trilogy. Uh, I'm pretty sure the original trilogy overall was beloved. It's going to cover tenure. How's it going, man? I would say it's overall beloved, in my opinion, right? Okay, uh, let's see. The original Star Wars movies were a product of the different time. Now, here's the thing. If you go watch Star Wars right now, the original trilogy, it still holds up. It still holds up, right? It's still good. Is there some janky, wonky, hokey stuff in it? Absolutely. But the story still holds up, right? You got the hero's journey guy from started from nothing and then became a legend himself that is luke skywalker and then you butcher his character in the sequel trilogies oh my god given the franchise's current popularity it's hard to believe that there was ever a time when no one on earth ever watched one of george lucas's star wars movies the first film in the original trilogy originally just titled star wars upon its 1977 release was shown to the public during a decade of classic hits like steven spielberg's jaws in 1975 and rocky in 1976 this was a time when hollywood relied all almost exclusively on traditional tropes to tell stories exclusively through a Eurocentric white male lens. Who the fuck wrote this article? Cameron Barnett. You look like a white male to me. Uh, protagonists were almost always played up as ultra masculine tough guys while supporting cast typically consists of domestic female characters or problematic stereotypes and as films released during its ins insulated time period the original star wars movies are often construed as possessing a similarly narrow and narrative focus this is why the fans this is why you, you blame the fans is because they like the old shit. Oh my god, dude. Despite taking place in the galaxy far, far away from the filmmaking conventions of Earth, Star Wars original truly features a mostly white cast while characters with largely unrealized potential had no LGBTQ plus storylines depicted on screen. Because this shit was fucking taboo. 
This shit is taboo. Right? I'm not saying that there, there weren't any LG... T's is questionable. LGB. But the fact that you have to, whenever possible, inject these garbage bullshit into your stories, that's what a lot of people hate. Now, if it came up naturally, it's a part of the, it's a part of the story that makes sense. You're not just like, hey, I'm Osha and I'm a lesbian. Hey, I'm Qui-Gon Jinn and I have sex with men. It's like, no, no. Hey, my, hey, my name is yada yada and this is my fucking pronouns. No one cares. Are you serious, man? Jesus, that's, that's why people hate you, Collider. You're a piece of shit. Uh, while powerful female leaders like Mon Mothra and Carrie Fisher's iconic Princess Leia are outspoken forces for good in the trilogy, the latter's relationship with the Force and her father is glossed over in favor of her brother and... And Leia's infamous bikini scene at Jabba's palace in Star Wars Return of the Jedi feels like a fodder for generation. Okay, so basically, this guy hates the original trilogy. This guy, this guy right here, Cameron Barnett, hates the original trilogy. Based off of this paragraph alone, he hates this trilogy so much. Oh my goodness, man. Fans weren't a problem when the hype of Star Wars lasted 40 years with no problems. Exactly. Jeez. Yet the original trilogy premise still feels magical to watch and provide a formative memories. I would say if this asshole were to make edits to the original trilogy, don't they will make the Princess Leia bikini scene gone, wiped from history. Uh, for older fans, creating such an impact on viewers' minds and many still consider the first three movies with the dignitative guide of Star Wars experience. Unfortunately, this mindset's reliance on the original trilogy's outdated aesthetics severely limits the understanding of what Star Wars can be. How about you just write a good story? Just write a good story. Fans weren't a problem, right? Exactly. Jesus. The person... Okay. The reason why nobody likes Rose Tico is because she was terribly written. It wasn't because of Kelly Marie Tran. Just letting you know now. Were there actually bad actors? Were there actually people online who actually didn't like her? Absolutely. Absolutely. But those are the that, that's, a, that's a small minority. I didn't like her character. It wasn't be, wasn't because she's Asian. Oh, oh, whoa! She's yellow like me. She's yellow like me. She's a trans, so she's 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 either Vietnamese or she's she's certain types of Chinese, okay? Right? But the thing is, the reason why people hate her is because of her character is terribly written. Jeez, man. Uh the aftermath of the original trilogy's popularity, Star Wars broadened its appeal to accommodate the entirely new generation of fans to the franchise. The prequels Queen Padme Amidala made up of the original movies oversight by showcasing a powerful fictional queen whose bravery and political wisdom competed with the likes of Count Dooku and, uh, and then the cha uh, Chancellor Palpatine and in the introduction of Ahsoka in 20, uh, uh, excuse me, not 20, yeah, 2007, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars gave younger viewers a more, a more powerful heroine to grow up with, increased the efforts of telling diverse Star Wars stories came when Disney purchased Lucasfilm in 2012. Though many of the Mouse uh, House's Star Wars release have been marred by online hate. Now, here's the thing. I think everyone thought that Queen Amidala Padme was a fine was a fine addition. I think everyone liked Natalie Portman as she's a good actor. And uh, she looks great in that uh, crop top. Uh, now, here's the thing. Uh, I think the original Ahsoka, for his thing, I didn't watch Rebels or Clone Wars, so I have no, like, you know, tie or recollection to any of these kind of things like Sabine or all the stuff that's in the Ahsoka TV show. But Ahsoka, I think she's fine, right? Created by Dave Filoni. And I think when we were talking to my friend um, Ogami during uh, Project Egg Roll, he mentioned that it was just inconsistencies, which what made Ahsoka, uh, people were like, why? Where was she? Why wasn't she in the, uh, what's it called again? Why wasn't she in the, um, What's it called again? The clone, uh, the Clone Wars, uh, not the Clone Wars, the fucking, uh, the, 
the, the prequels, the second prequel movie. Why wasn't she there, right? So that's the reason, it's continuity issues and that's the reason why people thought it was weird. Right, let's see. Uh, while Disney didn't make some decisions that caused legitimate, contra sorry, legitimate controversy within the Star Wars fandom, such as removing a, the beloved Legends continuity from canon, many alleged controversies of this time period unfolded because of uh, problematic Star Wars viewers chose outrage over trying to understand change. The narrative quality of the Disney's sequel trilogy aside, the movie's progressive decision to hire Daisy Ridley as Ray and John Boyega as Finn marked important first for the franchise release. Now here's the thing. I had no issues and a lot of people had no issues with Daisy Ridley or John Boyega. We originally thought that John Boyega was going to be a new Jedi or he's going to be trained as a Jedi. It was showed in the trailers and, uh, and a lot of the promo stuff. And what happened was that they they, they didn't really follow through with it, right? So Daisy Ridley, on the other hand, everyone thought she was hot. Her, her two sisters are hot. She has a nice ass. What's not to like, right? What's, people love hot females. But you know what? She was tell, terribly written. The first movie, um, the first sequel, uh, Force Awakens, she was fine. She was fine, right? She was a nobody. What you had a, the second movie, The Last Jedi, was what ruined everything. I hate her. I hate her because her tits aren't big. That is a true... That, that's definitely true. That's definitely true, right? But Finn, John Boyega, if he's, everyone thought that he was cool, but you wrote him into being a piece of shit. Ray, where's Ray? Ray, oh, where's Ray? Ray, Ray, just, dude, you just wrote him really, really bad. That's your, that's Disney's own doing. It's D Disney's fault that John Boyega's character sucked, right? And what made it worse that they know that China doesn't really like black people. China is majority of them are Asian, a majority of them are Chinese, right? Are they xenophobic? Absolutely. Right? And that's the reason why they shrunk his ass into like a fucking tiny dumb stamp in the poster. Right? Same thing with uh putting the mask on uh what's it called Chadwick Boseman in Black Panther, right? It's their fault. Is Disney's fault for downplaying John Boyega? Is Disney's fault nobody liked Ray? Let's continue. Yet these casting decisions also resulted in constant online harassment for both actors in the aftermath of their performances, with many detractors trying to drag Star Wars back into less inclusive past. Do you know what's okay? Let's. It just so happens that yes, in the past was less inclusive. Yeah, th th this is an actual fact. But do you know what's also in the past? George Lucas was at the helm of Star Wars. Things make sense, right? Pe people actually like the prequel trilogy, right? And do you know what's most important? Good storytelling. Good storytelling. That's it, right? You you're necessarily you're not necessarily wrong here. Technically, you're not wrong. Yeah, in the in the past, most all all three of the main characters were white. You did have Lando Calrissian, who's also really. You know, he ran Cloud City. He's a badass. Oh, jeez, man. Flash forward to Last Jedi's release in 2017, and this online problem hate reached its fever pitch. Kelly Marie Tran's heartwarming performance as Rose Tico drew the ire of racist internet horde, causing Tran to quit Instagram in order to look out for her mental health. Uh, Disney admittedly did not handle the backlash well. Of course they didn't, because Disney's fucking stupid. Holy shit, man. What are we what are we even talking about here? Not only did the final film in the sequel trilogy in 2019's Rise of the Skywalker greatly reduce Rose's screen time, but the brief lesbian kiss featured in the background at every end of the movie felt disappointing for audience members who would I forgot that was there. That movie was so bad, I didn't even remember the lesbian kiss. No one fucking cares about f figs kissing in the back. No one fucking cares about queer people kissing in the background. Make a good fucking story. Jesus. In this instance, it felt like the most vocal opponents of the sequel's central performances had won. Now, do you know why Kelly Marie Tran's uh, screen time was reduced to like two minutes? Do you know why? It's fucking Ryan Johnson. His dumbass cock ass penis dick 
ruin the the last Jedi. Jar 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 Abrams has to come back and fix it, and he tried to fix whatever he could. The continuity, the canon is all fucked up because of him, right? And who allowed the shit? Kathleen Kennedy. Holy crap, man. The audacity of this writer is whole Jesus, man. I, I'm surprised he does not fall down more often. Oh, man. The future of Star Wars should be focused on representation and inclusivity. Thankfully, the most recent installments of Star Wars Universe has built upon the franchise's contemporary legacy by including more representative storylines in an age of digital hate. The lesbian relationships between... Vel Sartha and Sinta Kaz in Andar marks an important step for the LGBTQ+. Now, here's the thing. this These two characters were written fine. No one had a problem with these characters. I watched Andor. No one had a fucking issue with any of these... And no one cared about this one. It wasn't a big deal. Oh, cool. They're lesbian. Who gives a fuck? Let's carry on. It didn't break the immersion of Star Wars. Oh, my... Uh, as a, uh, this relationship between Osha and May's mother and the acolyte, likewise, Kelly Marie Trans's 2018 article in the New York Times demonstrates that performers can reclaim their stories by publicly disavowing those who only have the courage to tear down others, uh, sorry, tear others down in private, providing an inspiring example of how actors can stand up to Star Wars' most toxic audience members. Now, like I said before, are there actual, like, hatred that are thrown? Absolutely. There are people who are crazy online. There are, are there racists online? Absolutely. And do you know what they hide behind? Anime profile pictures. That's what they hide behind. Anime profile pictures. As bigoted campaigns against Obi-Wan Kenobi's uh, Moses Ingram and uh, the acolyte prove the Star Wars online hate isn't going away anytime soon. Therefore, it's up to Star Wars creatives to boldly navigate the turbulent waters of the beloved franchise's fandom. In a recent interview with New York Times, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy herself acknowledged that women in Star Wars are often subject to audience attacks because of the franchise's vocal male fan base. Oh my god, dude. She even said it. Our, we have a vocal male fan base. You guys do. Why don't you cater to your fan base? Right? I guarantee you, if you put Sydney Sweeney as the main character in any Star Wars movie, that shit will hit a billion dollars. Oh my god, man. Critics in the press at, went after Kelly Marie Tran. Yeah, it's, it's so dumb. And then they made him into... <laughs> <laughs> oh man dude no so here's the thing like like i mentioned before i think lesbians used to be very cool until fat ugly women took over the lesbian thing right when we think of lesbians we think of hot athletic fit women with big ass titties tripping one another to death right basically squirting all over and stuff right but now when we think of lesbian we think of fat short stumpy Pink, blue, haired, probably. Oh my god, like that's what we think of them now. Oh my Jesus. All right, uh, see, this sentiment echoes uh, the similar views of both Hetland and director Shereen Obey Chinoy, who is set to helm Star Wars' upcoming solo Ray film. In an interview with Variety, Chinoy expressed her appreciation for the franchise's passionate fans, fan base, sorry, uh, but also acknowledged it's best for her to drown out the voices in order to tell her story. This delicate balance between creating Star Wars content and maneuvering around its most toxic elements highlights one of the most difficult struggles facing the franchise today. The most vocal viewers of the franchise wield the power of the internet in order to push a bigoted agenda that originates from the prejudices of an earlier time while mainstream Star Wars content has grown to produce meaningful narratives while being bogged down by hate in the background. Opinions about Star Wars have grown so loud because both sides are vying for rhetorical victory, but at the end of the day, these controversies are necessary. True fans understand the Star Wars universe sci-fi uh, is a sci-fi wonderland where anything can happen and anyone belongs. And the future looks bright for those who have already opened up their minds to the compassion that all audience members should have learned a long time ago. No. Write good stories. That's it. That is it. Write good stories. 
people will come. It's that simple. I don't know how it's so difficult for these people to understand. And Collider basically running court, uh, running defense. Oh my God. If this isn't, if this article doesn't say we hate our fans, nothing will. There it is. Star Wars hates their fans. They hate their fan base. I bet you if Kathleen Kennedy had the Thanos glove and snapped every original fan from the original trilogy out of existence, she would do it in a heartbeat. And that sucks. Is because we want to love Star Wars, right? And that's the reason why when Rogue One, whether you liked it or not, liked it or not, overall people thought it was good. The main character, I think it was fine. The main character was good, right? But the movie was good. Why isn't nobody bringing that up? Why, why, why is nobody bringing her up? It's because they don't want to be proven wrong, right? A lot of people just don't want to be proven wrong. Do you know who wants to be proven wrong? The fans. The Star Wars fan base wants to get proven wrong. Hope we wanted Acolyte to be good. We wanted The Last Jedi. We wanted The Rise of Skywalker to be good. We wanted to blow us out of the water. We wanted to, we want to love Star Wars. But the fact that each and every one of you guys that are actually making these dumb articles who are, or who are also working at Disney, they don't fucking care about the fans anymore. And that's what is actually upsetting.